So I want to talk to you a little bit about paths on Linux. And when I talk about paths, I'm talking about the path to a directory or a file. So in a terminal, you type a path to the location of a file or directory. And typically, we're going to talk about two different kinds of paths. We're going to talk about absolute paths and relative paths. And this is important to know. It's especially important to know for those of you that want to actually get a job working in Linux. Now, I don't work as a system administrator or anything like that. I, I don't have a tech-related job, right? I'm just a regular desktop Linux user, but even regular desktop Linux users need to know how to navigate the terminal a little bit. You need to know how to CD and LS around the file system, and to do that, you need to know how paths work. So let me switch over to my desktop, and I've got a terminal open, and I'm zoomed in so you guys can clearly read the text that I'm about to write. So if you're brand new to Linux and brand new to the terminal, two of the most common commands you will need to know right away are LS, which is the list command. If I I do ls this lists the files and directories that are located inside the directory i'm currently in the directory i'm currently in is my user's home directory the second common command that you'll use all the time is cd for change directory and typically you use this in the following format cd and then you write the path to some directory and that's why we're talking about paths today same thing with ls if you didn't want to just list the contents of the directory you're in you would do ls and then the path to some directory. Now one thing to note with the standard ls command, by default it doesn't show hidden files and directories. There's some special files that are hidden uh, in your directory, your home directory. They're called dot files or hidden files. They're called dot files sometimes it's because hidden files begin with a dot. So to see all the files that are listed in this directory you would do dash a and also add the l flag as well for the long form listing and this gives you a much more readable listing of the directory Plus, it gives you those extra hidden files that you normally wouldn't see, the ones that begin with the dot. Now, if I scroll back to the top of this list, the first two files in the uh, listing here are dot and dot dot. Now, what is that? Dot and dot dot. Well, those are aliases. The dot is actually an alias for the path of the directory that you're currently in, and the dot dot is an alias for the parent directory of the directory you're currently in. So for example, if I wanted to see what directory I'm currently in, pwd, print working directory, and I am in my user's home directory, which is slash home slash dt. If I do a ls on dot, I get a listing of slash home slash dt, right? Now, I, now ls without any argument defaults to the directory you're currently in, so I didn't have to specify the directory, but if I wanted to specify the directory, I could do slash home slash dt, or I could do dot. There's also another alias specific to your home directory, which is the tilde character, so I could do ls tilde, and they all give me the same output. They all give me a listing for this directory that I'm currently in, which happens to be my home directory. So that is the period or the single dot. That is the directory you're currently in. If I wanted to see the listing for the parent directory, I would do dot dot. So the parent directory in this case would be slash home. So in slash home, of course, there is one folder, dt. And if I wanted to see the listing of the parent of the parent folder, I could do ls dot dot slash dot dot. And that gives me the listing for the directory two levels up, which happens to be the root file system. Now let me clear the screen. One other thing I want to do is, uh, other than using the tilde character for an alias for home, another thing you can use is this particular shell environment variable. You could do dollar sign and then all caps home also works for your home directory. Now I don't often use this particular shell environment variable dollar sign home when I'm using the shell interactively, but once you start bash scripting, you will find this particular environment variable especially useful because sometimes you will be scripting and you need a path uh, that involves your home directory or some user's home directory, but every user's home directory is going to be something different. My user's home directory is slash home slash dt, but maybe your name is Bob. Your home directory might be slash home slash Bob. Well, if I write a script, you know, and I just have this variable here, dollar sign home, whoever runs the script, that is going to expand to their home directory. So again, if you get into bash scripting, you need to know about dollar sign home. So let's talk about paths. Let's first talk about relative paths because I think that's 
obvious what that is. I'm in my user's home directory. Remember, I'm in slash home slash dt. If I do it ls, there are several other files and directories in this directory. You can see I have my documents directory. I have my downloads directory. I could cd into one of these, change directory, and I could just type downloads. I could start typing downloads and then hit tab on the keyboard and the bash shell will auto complete the path. And now I'm in my downloads directory. I can verify that by print working directory pwd. And you can see I'm in downloads. Now, even though the full path to my downloads directory is slash home slash dt slash downloads because I was already in slash home slash dt up here I only needed to complete the rest of the path so this is a relative path but if I wanted to I absolutely could have typed the full path slash home slash dt slash downloads and that would have worked just fine I could also go back to my home directory by typing cd slash home slash dt that gets me back home but I didn't have to do that because because there are aliases for home. I could have typed CD tilde also takes me home. I could have also done CD and then use the environment variable dollar sign home. That would have also worked. And because I was in downloads, let me CD back into downloads. Because I was in downloads, I could have simply ran the command CD space dot dot to CD back into the parent directory, which in this case would have been slash home slash DT. Now one neat little trick you can do with CD. CD has this little command you can run CD space dash. What this does, this CDs you into the directory you were previously in. So where did I just come from? I came from downloads. So CD space dash takes me back to downloads. If I rerun the command, so if I hit up arrow on the keyboard, I'll get the last command I just ran. Let me hit enter. So and this time it takes me back to home and I can just CD dash to swap between those two directories. So if you find yourself going between two directories all the time, CD space dash is a very useful command. Now let me CD back into the home directory. If I CD with no arguments, it gives me the home directory. I can PWD to verify that. And let me clear the screen. One other thing you can do when you CD, for example, in this case, I'm going to CD into downloads. I could type downloads like that. I could also specify downloads by doing dot slash downloads. And that takes me also to the downloads directory. Now with a command like CD, you typically don't need to do the dot slash. The dot slash is implied, so you can leave it off. That's why simply CD downloads works. And this also works with other commands. For example, if I wanted to cat a specific file, where am I? I am in, let me PWD to verify where I'm at. I'm in my downloads directory. Let me CD back into my home directory. If I do a LS-A to get all the files and directories listed, including the hidden ones, I have my bash RC right here. This is the bash shells config file. Maybe I want to cat that, which is printing the output of the file here to the terminal. I can cat dot bash RC. And, you know, I get the output from that. If I wanted to, I could have really specified the dot bash RC by doing dot slash and then dot bash RC. But again, it, the dot slash in that case is implied. There, there's no reason to type those extra characters for that. And if I go a, a level deeper, maybe I go into my downloads directory again, I could cat dot dot slash dot bash rc uh, and you can see what this is going to do because i'm in my downloads directory and the bash rc is actually in my home directory my user's home directory is the parent directory cat dot dot is the parent directory slash dot bash rc and once again it cats the bash rc let me clear the screen and i'll cd back into home now one area where you do need to use the dot slash is anytime you're trying to run a script or a program uh, and it's not in the shells path for example uh, most of your programs that you run on your system they're part of what we call the path on your system so if I echo dollar sign path, all caps, you get a list of a bunch of directories that are colon separated. You see the colons here. So you get a directory, colon, directory, colon, directory, colon. So all of these directories that are in this output, any executable file in these directories, you can run just by typing the file name. You don't actually have to, for example, type user bin Firefox to launch Firefox. I could, you know, do the full path to Firefox, for example, but there's no need to because Firefox is in user bin, that binary is in user bin. So because it's part of the path, simply typing the name Firefox 
also works. So that is why when you run programs, for example, from your Linux run launchers, menu systems, typically you just type the name of the program, you know, whatever the name of the program happens to be, Firefox or uh, Chrome or Gedit or Kate or your terminal emulator, I'm using Alacrity, right? You don't have to type user bin Alacrity or, or wherever that particular executable file is located. That's because of the path. But sometimes you want to run programs or scripts that are not in one of those directories that are part of the path. For example, if I do a ls-a again, here in my home directory, I have some shell scripts probably. I have this script right here, test.sh. Now, my home directory is not part of the path, so I can't simply type test.sh and have this run because bash assumes that I am looking for a program called test.sh that is in the path. It's in one of these directories. So what Bash did, it went and looked for test.sh in each of these directories and it couldn't find one. So it doesn't know that that program exists. It says command not found. Well, that's because in this special case, because that shell script is not in the shell's path, to actually run it, I need to specify run the program that's found in this directory. So I need to do dot slash for this directory and then test.sh. And now it runs, and this particular shell script apparently is a very simple one. It echoes out, this is a test. So there you have it, a little bit about the paths on Linux and absolute versus relative paths, how to use it, what the dot means, what the dot dot means. This stuff, I know, you know, sometimes it can be a little complicated and seem like it's overwhelming, especially when you're new to Linux and new to the terminal and to the bash shell. But honestly, this stuff really isn't that hard. Once you start playing with it and learn a little bit more, uh, this stuff, you'll find it incredibly useful, especially as you progress further along your Linux journey. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tenrin, More, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode that you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors, so if you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.